Coming up on Tech News Today, will Facebook own your face? Well, they might own the word face. Also, German fans of Google are egging houses. Not egging them on. They're throwing eggs at them. And deep packet inspection. It's not just for the TSA anymore. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, November 24th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. And by the AARP Auto Insurance Program from the Hartford. Discover great rates, benefits, and service specifically designed for AARP members at aarp.thehartford.com slash podcast. And also by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view the comment on the winning ideas, go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I am Becky Worley. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is our last show before we all stuff ourselves in the United States on Turkey and watch football and fall asleep and then the next day get up and go shopping, right? That is correct. Um, we're not summary. sure which is the bigger tradition at this point, but all of them are, are enjoyable in some fashion. In their own right, yeah. Right. I, I feel I feel um, odd when I don't do uh, one, one of those, those things. things. <laughs> and I never do all three. Do you have I a always checklist? do the first two, but I, I, I rarely go shopping. On maybe, maybe you should have a Thanksgiving checklist. Nobody goes that. shopping on Friday. It's too crowded. <laughs> uh, Everyone let's... goes shopping on yeah. Friday. <laughs> Facebook Alternative Diaspora has gone live today. Uh, to catch you up, if you're not familiar, Diaspora was started on Kickstarter uh, when uh, some developers said, hey, you give us uh, enough money. If we raise enough money, we'll start an alternative to Facebook that is decentralized so anybody can run a server and will emphasize privacy so that your information stays under your control. They uh, opened the source code back in September, had a lot of criticisms about the security of it. They say they've fixed all those security problems, and they thank everyone for helping them out. And uh, they are now sending out invites to a limited number of people so that you can try it out for yourself. Yeah, you go there and you can sign up. They tell you, hey, okay, just verify your email and then we'll let you know if you get an invite. Um, they say they're working on a lot of different elements of the service. They say they know they need to improve security already and that they need to open up the APIs a little bit more. And uh, I think, you know, I signed up earlier in the day and haven't gotten an invite yet, but my my big question is what will it look like in terms of will I be able to take all that information that I downloaded off of Facebook, now that you can download your Facebook info, and will I be able to upload portions of that? How how will this transition work, or will everyone just start from zero? Yeah, the screenshots uh, from earlier uh, this year made it look very much like Facebook, and they say that, that your data is entirely portable, so it, uh, presumably you'd be able to take other data from either Google or Facebook or MySpace or anybody else and import it. Uh, they also said that the invites will go out on a first-come, first-served basis, starting with the folks who gave them money on Kickstarter. And I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. If you helped fund this thing to get it off the ground, then you should get invited in first. Yeah, well, that means that Mark Zuckerberg will probably join up because he right. gave him money, right? He did. Yeah, that's true. At least he says he did. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you should know that there are other sites out there doing a similar sort of thing and they may uh in the open source way band together because they're interoperable uh so you might want to check out if you're interested in this sort of thing apple seed or one social web or elg that's two g's e-l-g-g -G. i'll tell you one thing that diaspora needs to do if they want to uh, go big is they need to actually get diaspora.com right now it's <laughs> join diaspora.com and that's not going to sustain them <laughs> diaspora.com is actually this <laughs> It's a oh, link no. farm. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, then maybe they can do another Kickstarter fund to raise money to buy yeah. diaspora.com. 
<laughs> uh, maybe Oracle will lend them so, some money. They're getting $1.3 billion from SAP uh, for copyright infringement uh, that was part of that lawsuit. That was the lawsuit that Larry Ellison took the stand for. It was the lawsuit where they were trying to track down Leo Apotecker, the current CEO of HP, uh, who once worked at SAP, and Apotecker was conveniently out of the country. Uh, so $1.3 billion, that's about one quarter's worth of revenue for SAP. It's going to be paid to Oracle, and Bloomberg says this is the highest ever award in a copyright infringement case. Yeah, and it's it's got to be a little bit scary for SAP. They'd reserved about $160 million for the litigation. Uh, that's not even close to what the uh, judgment has been for. Now, the judge could reduce that, but experts say that right now it doesn't look like he's going to drop it by much. Um, if they did have to pay out that 1.3, it would be a third of all the available cash that uh, they have on hand. Um, interesting to me, as a resident of Oakland, California, the trial was here in Oakland. Yeah. And uh, um, they asked some of the, the jurors and uh, one of the guy, a 57 year old auto body technician says, if you take something from someone and you use it, you have to pay. Um, so it's just kind of a, a, a huge, um, it's, it's, a, it's a real issue in terms of this has been going on for a while. It was decided and now What's next? The, and well, the interesting thing for SAP is they stipulated from the beginning that they realized that their subsidiary that they had bought uh, had violated copyright. They, they weren't arguing that. They weren't trying to defend it. What they were trying to do in the lawsuit is say, we only took around 300 customers based on this infringement. Uh, when they, where they were actually downloading Oracle software without permission and providing third-party service to companies. So they thought the damages should be much, much less in the millions, not the billions, because of the, they said, look, we'll pay for the damage done, but we only want to pay for the actual damage done. And like other copyright trials we've seen, like with Jamie Thomas and the downloading of music, the jury counted the value of every download, every infringement, plus damages on top of that, rather than the actual value of the damage done. So that's why Jamie Thomas had millions of dollars of fines for downloading 24 songs that are probably worth about 24 bucks. Yeah, and tomorrow now, the subsidiary was purchased for just $10 million. It's a 30-employee subsidiary. Um, now, the jury, on the other hand, saying, well, you know, a lot of the uh, execs at SAP were involved in the acquisition of this Tomorrow Now company. So if they had high-level involvement, they must have known. They were certainly culpable. But if the company itself that did the damage was only worth $10 million, $1.3 billion seems excessive. Yeah, uh, but that is that is the way these juries have gone. Even when judges try to hold them back and say, look, you know, uh, y yes, you should award a damage, but uh, award it in this range, the juries say, no. We're going to we're going to award higher. Uh, and and that that gets into a whole area of law that, that we don't you know, you should watch this week in law with Denise <laughs> Howell if you want to find out more about how how that works. But juries do that quite often. They ignore judges and they, they award high damages. Uh, I don't know if they get just caught up in the in the drama of it all or what. Uh, another interesting uh, legal challenge going on is the Securities and Exchange Commission starting to investigate analysts who look into supply chains. Now, that may not sound like it means anything to you, but the SEC obviously uh, regulates insider trading, right? So if you, if you know something, you can't turn that into a benefit and make money off of it. You, can't, you have to make that knowledge public, or it has to be public knowledge. You can't have insider information and make money off of it. So what they're doing is they're finding these analysts who go and check on supply chains and then deduce what Apple is going to do. In this case, so they find out, hey, hey, a bunch of screens are being made by Foxconn. That obviously means new iPhone in the chain. And then they recommend stock purchases based on that information. The SEC is investigating to say, hey, wait a minute. If any of that information is confidential that you find out, you might be breaking the law. Right. And this is pertinent to us because, you know, we all kind of go, hmm, is the iPhone going to Verizon? What does Mac rumors say? What do these guys say? Um, and Paul Atkins, who's the uh, Securities and Exchange Commissioner in, a, in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, he said, here's the differentiation in terms of leaks and, and these supply chain issues. If you go in and pay the mail clerk to give you special information, that's not proper. 
So again, if you look at the screens issue, if you go in and talk to someone at Foxconn and you pay them and you find out, oh, more screens coming, hmm. But he also clearly delineated if you overhear something in a bar, well, then that's not insider trading. He did not specifically say whether someone leaves a phone in a bar and then sells it to a blogger. <laughs> yeah, right. But he did mention the bar scenario. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole different ball of wax. But, <laughs> you know, it, depending on what they find here and what the determination is, this could change reporting. This could change what you know. This could change, oh, heavens, the rumor mill for Apple. In other words, we might not be able to know reliable information of when products are coming uh, because Apple never says. And if they can no longer report these leaks about supply chain issues like screens and chips and things being ordered, uh, being produced, uh, I have a feeling somebody's going to find this stuff and leak it out. But we won't have as a reliable way to tell whether it's a real rumor or not. You know what I mean? There's, there's well, rumors and, and then there's the rumors. That's the question. Is it the reporting or the leaking that is being called yeah. into question here? So it, it it certainly raises the stakes, that's for sure. All right, let's take a moment and thank one of our sponsors today. We have extra sponsors because we won't have shows for a couple of days, you know. It's so. like a three-course meal for Thanksgiving. Exactly. <laughs> today's uh, episode. <laughs> first sponsor is Ford, makers of Ford Voice Activated Sync. You've heard us talk about the fact that with Ford Voice Activated Sync, you get in your car, your Bluetooth phone hooks up, and you don't have to take your hands off the wheel. You can safely keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, and have text messages read to you, send text messages, play through your playlist, all by just voice command. Uh, it's, it's a great way to drive around town and there's a new program from ford to check out called the 2012 ford focus global test drive now through december 31st 2010 uh, submit a video to participate. If you're selected, Ford will donate $10,000 to the charitable cause of your choice and send you and a friend on a free trip to a secret location in Europe. Ooh. And uh, it's not just like, you know, a camp or something. You actually get something out of, fun out of it. You get to test drive the all-new 2012 Ford Focus. To learn more and submit a video entry, go to twitfordfocus.com. Whip out one of those videos like you do when you, you when you send in the videos to TNT. Uh, let them know what charitable cause you would like to support. You tell, tell that in your video. Your video should be less than two minutes in length. Uh, and then upload your video to the 2012 Ford Focus Global Test Drive between now and December 31st. The URL, again, is twitfordfocus.com. Trip to Europe. Drive a Ford Fiesta. Try out Ford Sync. Uh, and you can find it at a uh, Ford Lincoln Mercury dealer near you. We got another meaty story today, uh, which is the uh, the return of deep packet inspection. Becky, are you excited? Hmm. Well, it's no Tofurky story, that's for sure. This is this is exciting because which is also another a meaty company story. has lost their mind thinking this is a great idea. Two companies in this case, I guess, uh, form which many of you in Britain may be familiar with, when they tried to, uh, without asking anyone, do deep packet inspection on all of the BT ISP subscribers and target advertising at them. That didn't go down so well. And let me see if I get this deep packet inspection right. Just see if I can summarize this correctly. As your traffic and your requests on websites travel to and from all the nodes, deep packet inspection means that those packets of data are being sidebarred, pulled away, and inspected to see, oh, what exactly are they searching for right this moment? It's like the most intense online profiling yeah. that we've seen to date. Forget the ever cookie. Uh, this, this is every piece of data going across is inspected uh, to find out information about you. Now, Form and this other uh, company, KindSight, uh, both say that they would not inspect emails. You can trust them. Uh, sure. that, that they would not inspect personally sensitive information and they wouldn't even keep browser history for you. They would just try to detect what kind of stuff you like and what you're doing and target advertising towards you based on that. So not just like, hey, you know, uh, Tom really likes baseball and so we're going to put ads related to baseball up. They're going to say, when Tom's working, Tom needs ads that talk about devices and services uh, and when Tom's playing, that's when you put up the, the baseball and the Star Wars stuff. It'll tell whether you're actually online doing work or just messing around and target ads uh, appropriately based on that. 
Yeah, in their own marketing materials, they say they know more about you than Google or Facebook even, and they base all of that and what their proprietary technology is, is these multiple characters within each identity. So they can sense, oh, even beyond leisure and work, they could create, oh, he's in sports mode, oh, he's in entertainment mode, and really focus advertising um, at, a, at a microscopic level, and that is what has people um, up in arms. Now, part of their business model now that they're so open and informing people, and they're trying this out in uh, Brazil right now is where they've got the deepest saturation of um, the trial. What they're doing is they're actually asking for consent, and they say half of people asked have consented, and in return, they're giving them a security product. They say it's an identity theft scanning tool. If you'll give up all of your security, we'll make sure that you have security. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a racket. Yeah. I mean, this is a horrible idea. Uh, I, I understand what they're, they're trying to, to pitch here, uh, which is we'll give you a service, and in exchange for that service, we'll, we'll take some data from you, and we'll, we'll use that to, to sell advertising, and we'll cut the ISP in on it. So that's why the, the ISP has to be involved, because they're the ones that are going to do the deep packet inspection on you. They're doing it right and making it opt in. I'll give them that. Uh, but what, it's one thing to say, hey, I'll give you my email address and I'll fill out a little survey in exchange for some free service. It's another to say, hey, in exchange for this security service of some undescribed measure, I will give you every piece of data I send across the Internet and allow you to inspect it. I, I don't think so. Yeah, it's crazy talk. Um, I think that they would have to significantly change their model in a lot of ways if they even tried to make entry in the U.S. And in the U.K., they had such a gaffe to begin with that they have a lot of backpedaling if they even want to have any entry. But since it's opt-in, there's an easy solution. Don't opt-in. There you go. Vote with your opting. Uh, let's move on. There's uh, uh, several stories out today about how people use the Internet, especially mobile Internet. Uh, Opera, the browser company, does a state-of-the-Internet report every once in a while they say in the united states young adults aged 18 to 27 spend more time browsing the internet on their phone than on a traditional pc uh stat counter says worldwide mobile web usage that's you know web on your phone is highest in asia and africa not europe and north america uh and the pew uh research center for internet life the pew american internet life project uh, says higher income homes use internet and mobile devices the most often of anybody. That's the least surprising one. Mm -hmm. uh, but this this uh, really interesting that the highest mobile web usage uh, when you restrict it to just mobile is Asia and Africa. And you have to wonder if this is for the same reason or two different reasons. So in Africa, you would assume that it's because the infrastructure for desktop and laptop and Wi-Fi um, and broadband deployment aren't as built out um, and therefore mobile is just a no-brainer it's like skipping leapfrogging into that mobile generation but in Asia you kind of wonder is that sort of the Korea concept where mobile penetration is higher than anywhere in the world or is it also um, this mobile leapfrogging it's hard to, hard to know well and it's interesting also that the lowest percentage of mobile devices is South America 1.46 percent just below Europe uh, hmm. So it's it's not just about, you know, the economic make makeup or the socioeconomic makeup of the region. Uh, and I think you're right. I think it's different reasons in different places. In Africa, you've got a lot of people starting to use mobile devices for banking. Uh, and I know this hmm. goes on in other places of the world, but more often than not, the examples I hear about uh, are in either Africa or India, where people are using the ability to store minutes as a bank and there's services mm. cropping up to make it easy to do this uh, mm. on your prepaid wireless in places where there there is no banking otherwise you got to go to a local loan shark uh, mm. to store money or transfer money so the ability to send money over your phone is becoming huge yeah the, the South America piece is uh, sort of funny when you look at it from a social or more of a um, anthropological like what what different cultures are are into because in the u.s some of the highest mobile usage is for hispanic um americans in terms of latinos and latinas using latinos and latinas using uh, mobile phones so it just seems like it's all over the map literally in terms of where it's where it's working and where it's sort of slower to develop Wired's got a good story today on what will happen to all of the batteries in our electric cars uh, once the cars are done. 
Uh, GM plans to build 10,000 Chevy Volts next year. Nissan could have the capacity to build 500,000 of their Leafs by 2015 or, or other electronic uh, electric vehicles. Now, uh, are they Leafs or Leaves? I would guess they're Leaves. <laughs> Leafses. You know, they're going to they're gonna come up with other names. So they're just <laughs> Nissan EVs. But okay. uh, the, the issue is they're finding out that these batteries, uh, they weren't sure that this was going to happen, but the batteries last longer than the life of the car. Uh, the, the batteries last about 20 years, they think. They're going to last about 20 years. The typical service life of a car is 10 to 12 years. This so is such what do you do with the battery once, you, once the car is done? Do you remember when EVs first came out and the hybrids and everyone thought, well, we don't know how long those batteries are going to last and they're so expensive and replacing them is going to cost so much money. Well, that story never happened. According to that Wired. the exact opposite. Yeah, General Motors is working with a, uh, a group called the ABB Group uh, to find out places where they could recycle the batteries, even if they're at 70% capacity. Uh, they think uh, renewable energy storage like wind farms, backup power supplies for businesses, grid load management so that you can even out peaks and valleys during off-peak times uh, might be ways to do that. However, Mark Duvall of the Electric Power Research Institute says that's not as easily done as it is to say. Uh, he says maybe premise energy storage. Uh, batteries could be used by homes and businesses to store energy from maybe rooftop solar cells. Uh, batteries could be used at transformers to manage loads. He think that that's actually possible. Uh, and high power short duration storage, uh, a buffer for, for load peaks might be useful. He says a lot of these other uses they're talking about, you know, wind storage and that, these batteries are going to be unreliable and old, and they might not be ideal for that sort of usage. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like a DIY project kind of waiting to happen. People who want to go off the grid, people who want sort of an emergency generator backup power service. Um, but that is the big problem with a lot of these green energy sources is you got wind when it's windy and you got sun when it's sunny. But what if it's not windy or sunny? So batteries are the big bottleneck. So um, and I just think you never know what people could create um, in terms of almost like a do-it-yourself supercomputer made out of old desktops that people don't want. You never know how they'll kludge together batteries. Yeah. But it's good that people are starting to think about this and figure yeah. out uh, what they can do to maybe turn those batteries from a money sink into uh, a benefit, something that can actually be reused and, and, and contribute and become an economic plus instead of an economic negative on these cars. Claire Perry, a member of parliament in the UK, uh, would like to create an opt-in system to prevent children gaining access to pornography. Sounds like a laudable goal, right? Let's prevent uh, kids from accidentally finding porn. Uh, the problem is, I think she misunderstands how the internet works. She <laughs> says, okay, your television stations, they can't just put porn on. You have to buy it. You know, it has to be, you know, you can have pa uh, parental controls on your television. Uh, if you go into a, a newsstand, they put the, the adult magazines up on a high shelf so the kids can't get them. Let's have the ISPs make sure that all the porn sites are 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 behind a wall so so that they can't, uh, the kids can't get to them. There's no problem with that, right, Becky? Okay, let me just show you how this is going to work up. Ring, ring. Hi, Comcast. Yeah, it's Becky Worley. I do want the porn. Thanks. <laughs> Are you well, kidding me? Well, the, uh, the, the, before you even get there, the Internet doesn't work that way. The Internet isn't a cable company that said, I'm going to put these 70 to 100 channels into your house. Right. And I'll determine which ones I can put. The Internet is anybody can put up an, a page anytime, anywhere. Uh, so... Saying that the ISPs somehow should be responsible for for putting a, a child block in front of sites of any kind uh, is just impractical. It, you, it, the the analogy that that MP Perry should be using is not cable television; it's the telephone. It's to say that we should we should have uh, the telephone company make sure that no one ever calls you and says something nasty, because anybody can pick up a phone and do something. That's the same way with the internet. Anybody can put up a page anywhere, anytime. Yeah, I mean, this is this has got problems six ways to Sunday, from technical to social barriers. But um, you know, I think it, it points to the the fact that even though we all think that that's so obvious, that there's still you know people are still fighting the fight of I don't want my kids on the computer. I don't know exactly how to create a safe environment for them on the internet. And and it's you've got still twins, you know, you know this is gonna this is an issue, right, Tom? I can't even think about them being on the computer yet. It's like, what do you want me to think about them driving now? You're just trying to match. Where me are out. they going to college? <laughs> How am 
I going to pay for it? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll let you recover from that uh, and take a break to thank the Hartford for helping to bring Tech News Today to you today. This episode is brought to you by the AARP Auto Insurance Program from the Hartford. For our audience members over the age 50, the AARP Auto Insurance Program from the Hartford can save you $384 on auto insurance. More than 3 million AARP members who are already enjoying the benefits of this program, including lifetime renew bleh, lifetime renewability, a lifetime repair guarantee, and a six-point claim guarantee. They won't guarantee that I'll pronounce things right, but they'll do those three things for you. Customers describe the claims experience as fast, easy, and outstanding. Check them out today. Get an eight-minute quote. Doesn't take long. Go to aarp.thehartford.com slash podcast. That's aarp.thehartford.com slash podcast. Time now for the news fuse. By a vote of 331 to 294, the EU Parliament has approved the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement, according to an IT World article. The most controversial paragraph in the final text leaves the door open for countries to introduce the three strikes rule, wherein you are accused three times of copyright infringement and lose your internet connection whether you can prove that you did it or not. Uh, the proposed agreement would also place sanctions against the marketing or use of any device or software that works as a means of circumventing copyright protection. If you are a co-founder of Twitter... Ooh, that's well, not me. No, it's not you? No. Okay, some other guy. Well, then, if you're that guy, what do you do after Twitter? Why? How about using the information service to create a news network like a wire service. Well, Bistone told wire service Reuters, <laughs> Reuters about his plans. Um, there's an irony in telling Reuters. Why can I not say Reuters? Reuters, right? Because it's almost Reuters? Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm having a brain fart. I'm, I'm over, I'm Black Friday drunk. Because you're still thinking about sending your twins to college. Okay. <laughs> Bistone <laughs> told wire service Reuters about his plans and while it does sound a little weird he makes a good point about connecting news gatherers with primary sources on the ground as news breaks so look for a Twitter news network we'll see whether you're a Twitter co-founder or not, you got to love a judge who loves fair use. Here's the backstory. Portland, Oregon's Center for Intercultural Organizing posted an article from a Las Vegas newspaper, and we've mentioned this company before on Tech News Today. Right Haven is suing them. They're trying to sue anybody who ever quotes anything from this Las Vegas paper. But surprisingly, a Nevada judge has given uh, the law firm Right Haven until mid-December to explain why one of their targets wasn't exercising its right to fair use. In other words, they're presuming that the Portland company was invoking fair use here when it republished the newspaper article. So uh, this is the second time that Wright Haven has faced a fair use defense. Boo, Wright Haven. On the other side of the fair use coin, Matthew Crippen, who is in court over his business selling mod chips for Xboxes, will not be allowed to use fair use as his defense. This from U.S. District Judge Philip. Um, noted that the DMCA makes it a crime to circumvent a technological measure that effectively controls access to copyrighted material, even if there's no proof of intention to pirate. There's no exemption uh, for Xbox mod chips like there is for iPhone jailbreaking. And speaking of the iPhone, I know we just got iOS 4.2.1 uh, earlier this week, but reports are emerging that Apple's already planning another update to the iPhone, iOS 4.3, for mid-December. Mac Stories report that since 4.2.1 was delayed, that's why the two updates would come so closely together. But Apple had always planned to launch 4.3 on December 13th. That's a Monday and a date close to the rumored launch of Rupert Murdoch's new iPad-only newspaper, The Daily. The Daily. Facebook will be allowed to trademark the word face for services like online chat rooms and electronic bulletin boards for transmission of messages among computer users in the field of general interest and here this is important concerning social and entertainment subject matter facebook just needs to start using the name alone on a product and pay the issuing fee they're not allowed to use face on anything related to motoring or to cars but what about FaceTime, huh? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, no, it's just the word face. They already have a trademark on using face with book. They're mm. getting, trying to trademark just the use of the word face alone, which they don't actually use. So they got to start using minute. it first before they can actually accept the trademark issuance. So the things that they want to name with this would be face, space, no, and then whatever? No, it would just be the use would of, just be face. Use of face. I don't know about space or not. So this is going to be basically Facebook's eye 
as in uh, for Apple, right? right? Face pad. No, no, no. It's just trademarking the use of the word face. They could yeah, start a confusing. new company called Face, and it would they would have the trademark on. Hmm. Okay. The neodymium, the, uh, the, the rare earth stuff, we, we need that. <laughs> China has begun exporting rare earths to Japan after a two-month suspension due to a territorial row. Japan's trade minister confirmed that shipments of the essential minerals for electronics uh, are starting this week. The halt in rare earth exports came after Japan's navy arrested a Chinese fishing boat captain near disputed East China Sea islands. And Apple won. One of only about 200 such machines built in Apple co-founder Steve Jobs' parents' garage sold at Christie's Auction House in London today for over 130,000 pounds. That's about 210,000 U.S. dollars. Uh, the Apple One, which didn't include a casing, power supply, keyboard, or monitor, originally retailed for creepy number, $666.66 no in 1976. Apple discontinued the model in 1977. And Google's wave is not dead yet. Thanks to the open sourcers at the Apache Software Foundation, the Mountain View Chocolate Factory, Novell, and a handful of other organizations uh, who have submitted client and server code to the Apache Software Foundation for what's now going to be called Wave in a Box. The code is available Step as an one. <laughs> Sorry. Put your wave in a box. <laughs> Code's available as an incubator project. A phase project passes through uh, before becoming full fledged. So they've got a year to see if it catches on as a real open source project. Finally, German vandals are targeting Street View opt out phones. You may know that uh, in Germany, you are allowed to say, I would like my house blurred from Google Street View. I don't want people to be able to see that I have a house or what it looks like from the outside. Uh, so German fans of Google are now going around throwing eggs at the houses that are blurred and tacking things to their door that say Google is cool. Yeah, so take that. <laughs> this is just so you great. You know, the Germans used to tack really substantial things to doors, yeah. like 99 reasons, you know, to separate from the Catholic Church back in the day. Go Martin! It's really come down. <laughs> since then <laughs> this is genius though i mean okay this is what this is what having an open like it was a community is about that you can you know we're gonna we're gonna respect everyone's privacy but then we're gonna hassle <laughs> we're you gonna egg it. you come yeah. on don't do that no <laughs> all right uh, let's move on to the calendar uh i've got three quick things and then becky's got a ton of deals for you so let me get these out of the way first i'm very excited gran turismo 5 is out Hopefully it'll be on my doorstep when I get home. Uh, the Desert Bus for Hope project is going on right now at desertbus.org. They are playing the horrible game Desert Bus, which consists of driving a bus from Arizona to Las Vegas and back without changing the wheel in real time. It takes about eight hours. Uh, they're about 130 plus hours in, and they're trying to raise money for the charity Child's Play, which brings video games to kids who are in uh, terminal or near terminal care at hospitals. And finally, Richard Branson says, I can do that too, Rupert Murdoch, and he's pl planning on launching a project magazine next week. That's the name of it, project. That'll be for the iPad also, just like the Daily. All right, you guys ready for some Black Friday O-Rama? Bring it on. The thing I'm going to tell you about is where you're not going to get a deal. Do you remember there was that story that TJ Maxx was going to have the iPad for $3.99? Yeah, yes. I thought that was for real, no? I called TJ Maxx. They said, yeah, we don't even know how those iPads got in our store. That's absolutely <laughs> not happening. No way. And it if we'd known Germans. about it, we would have all run down and gotten them. It was a so, prank. But there are some tablet deals. So uh, this is the Galaxy Tab. It'll be three fifty with the contract deal. It's at the Shack. It's at Best Buy. It's at Office Max. And check this out. If you're watching, I've got the Kmart Kobe. No, oh, that's a uh, hot item. Yeah. I know. $179 Android tablet and the very similar Velocity Micro Cruise. Uh, and this one will be at Sears for two fifty. I'm not recommending these. I'm just saying, hey, yeah. you're gonna see some Android. I tablets. would recommend being very skeptical about products from Kobe. They tend to be Kobe. very cheap. Disposable electronics. All right. You're going to see a lot of flip cam ultras for 99 bucks off the 150 price. Uh, Best Buy for sure. Amazon, I think, is going to have it at some point. Um, TVs. Here we go. These are the door busters, okay? So we've got the 32-inch Emerson LCD. Again, not a recommend. This is just the cheapest TV I could find. 32 inches, $198 at Walmart. A 40-inch LCD uh, from Westinghouse at Target. That's going to be $298, down from 550 
A 42 inch plasma from Sears and Kmart down to 400. And this may be one of the best TV deals in terms of the best TV is Panasonic 50 inch plasma, 699 down from 999. That's at Best Buy. Not bad. I like um, Panasonic. Yeah, there's a Zenith 50 inch plasma that's 499 at Sears down from 699. But, you know, the Panasonic brand is definitely a little bit more well known there. Um, okay. Uh, at. Let's see, I'm trying to get the real geeky deals here. Okay, so the doorbuster from Walmart is going to be the Wi-Fi built-in Magnavox Blu-ray player, 69 bucks. plus you get 10 bucks in Voodoo credits. Um, other than that, I've seen a lot of the Sony Wi-Fi Blu-ray players, but they're all about 99 bucks. But remember, if you're going to use Wi-Fi with it, you have to buy an adapter to go with it, and those things are spendy, like over 50 bucks. Um, you know, there's a lot of weed deals out there. Uh, Walmart has one for weed 50. deals. Weed, dude. Oh, oh Nintendo Wii dude, deals. Weed, I see. Dude, <laughs> we. Uh, I know that you know our audience probably is way beyond that. Um, but they're one ninety nine at Walmart with a fifty dollar gift card, and also at Meyer they're one sixty. And then I've only found one Connect deal. And it's a coupon code that you use at the Microsoft Store, and it gets you 40 bucks off. So I think that mm. the Connect bundle with the mm. four gigabyte Xbox is 249 Nice. Yeah. Uh, a couple more, and then I'll be done. iTunes cards are 20% off all over the place. Sam's Club has $60 iTunes card packs for 48 bucks. Um, and if you look for them, they're, they're really out there. Laptop deals. Um, you know, most of them are really low, 15 inches, but they're, they're you know, Celeron processors are lower. And two gigabytes of memory, 250 hard drives for about 275 is about what I'm seeing. That's a pretty good price. Those are doorbusters. And finally, this is a pretty good deal, too. Two HP printer cartridges plus 100 postage stamps. You buy that at Costco, you'll get 25 bucks off. That's a real utilitarian one. Right. I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to have all this stuff. Um, it'll actually be on the abc.com website starting first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I'll be all over GMA and um, doing all these deals. But you heard them here first. They're all, if you want to search for them, bfads.net is the best to search. bfads.net. And then I'll have them all at abcnews.com tomorrow morning. All right, let's get a, a couple of voicemail and an email out of the way. And uh, then we'll finish up and let you go, let everybody go for the long weekend here in the United <laughs> States. Uh, voicemail first, which Netflix streaming are we using? Wonders this caller. Hey, everyone, love what you do. I was just listening to the latest episode where you're talking about uh, TNT offering a streaming only plan. And I have to say, uh, you were talking about, oh, should I get the one DVD a month? Should I keep it? You know, just as a placeholder, if there's something that maybe isn't available for streaming on the off chance. And I have to say, what are you talking about? Nothing's available for streaming. Yeah, maybe we get some B-rated movies or, uh, you know, a couple of TV shows that have been in there. But I have to say, the bulk majority of their inventory is still DVD by mail. I go into the new arrivals on Netflix, and maybe one out of 15 or one out of 20 movies I can actually stream from my computer. So I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe using a different net Netflix than uh, I am. <laughs> Take care, guys. Keep it up. Uh, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Really? No, okay. I, I sort of agree. I mean, it's a good counterpoint, which is like you still want the DVDs if you want every movie. But there's lots of good movies available in Netflix streaming like Up, Iron Man, Star Trek, the new J.J. Abrams version, Zombieland, Monsters, Inc., uh, okay, so Constant Gardner. Thing you hit really well is it's great for kids. I use the streaming nonstop for my kids, but Made I have in Sweden. Netflix. Yeah, but see, that's the point. You're like a that's guy who a has free man. time to go to the movies. I'm like just trying to see a blockbuster here, people. I you said know? Star Trek, Iron Man. These are blockbusters. Yeah, but that was yeah, Iron Man and Star Trek were out years ago. What, what are you talking about? Iron Man was out last spring. This is about the right time for it to appear in your queue. It's okay. They have the occasional, but I tend to agree with Mr. Caller Man and say, you got to keep the discs. You've got to keep the discs. The At human centipede. Yeah. Tyler oh. Perry's I can do bad all by myself. The human centipede. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's starting to, to dry out a little bit here, but you can watch good stuff on Netflix and streaming, but he's right. I will grant you, you get a whole lot more. You get a lot more with the DVD plan.
But some yeah. people don't need that. They just want a few muties. That's All right. cool. Finishing up with the email to TNT at twit.tv. This one comes from David. Says, I am a longtime listener. I wanted to comment regarding pulling the plug and ditching the cable box for an a la carte device, such as a Roku or an Apple TV. I was curious if anyone has ever tried doing a mobile application for the device, and if so, what were the results? One of my clients owns a local limo company and wanted to install Roku with an attached MiFi device in lieu of a satellite dish in his limo. I haven't really heard much regarding any mobile applications for the Roku, but I would assume this would work, taking into consideration cell reception and tiered data pricing. I think if successful, this might also be a great marketing tool for Roku to release a battery-powered version for people on the go, especially with such a low price point. Just a thought. I guess you could do Slingbox with a Roku. <laughs> This just reminds me, I think there was like an Eddie Murphy skit about, I got a phone in my limo, and yeah. now it's, you got a Roku in your limo. <laughs> All right, uh, before we finish, I got to thank our, our last uh, sponsor. Uh, we had we had three of them today, and we're happy to have them all to help us bring you tech news today. The GE is bringing you the $200 million Eco-Imagination Challenge. You know we've talked about it before. They're investing $200 million in great ideas for improving the way energy is produced, transferred, and consumed, uh, renewables, the grid efficiency category, the eco-homes and buildings. They're trying to find partners to take that $200 million and invest in great ideas in each of these areas. If you'd like to learn more and read the winning ideas, find out which ideas are going to happen, go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. That's ecomagination.com slash challenge. And we thank GE for supporting Tech News Today as well as Green Tech Today. Which yeah, and if, to you're, if you have a little bit of time this weekend, you should really go check out Green Tech today. Dr. Kiki did a great job with the Chevy Volt. Um, she did a deep look into that. We've got some great shows on Green Tech today, and please would love your support. And uh, it's it's cool. It's not like, hey, you should recycle. It's the cool tech that's innovating the green tech and the green energy boom. All right. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget uh, to help out Twitter. Uh, uh, pick our best of the year you can go to twit.tv slash best of uh, we won't be having tech news today tomorrow or Friday because of the holiday here in the United States but we will be back at you on Monday see you then happy Thanksgiving